Let me say welcome to and good morning and good Sabbath to everyone. A um, few of you were here earlier and saw Praise and Play, colorful thing on the screen. And um, so we'll, we're making progress on getting set up for next week. And uh, we look forward to Foothill people being here and uh, and Josh Coleman will be coming in on Friday and we'll see him next Sabbath as well. So praise God for all these very helpful people that have, uh, so we want to keep, keep praying for this time and for the effort we will make and we'll have a few things to do today, but all coming together and God is making that happen. So uh, today then is an also an important service as we do the, uh, observe the Lord's Supper. And so um, let's pray now. And as this service continues, let's make sure it's worship and praise and that we are ready for that time when it comes. Let's pray together. Father, in a minute, we're going to be singing about how holy you are, and we're just grateful that the scripture tells us to praise you. It has so much, so many words of, of declaring how great you are, and some of those are in the book of Isaiah, where we read, holy, 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 and so, Father, Today, we just want to commit this time to you. We thank you for this Sabbath. We ask your blessing on us as we uh, remember what Jesus did for us. So, and we pray these things in his name. Amen. Let's sing. Our scripture reading this morning is taken from 1 Corinthians 15. 1 through 8. Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preached to you, which also you received, and which you stand, by which also you are saved. If you hold fast that word which I preached to you, unless you believed in vain, for I delivered to you Okay, sorry. Um... crazy thing. Um, first of all, that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, and that he was seen by Cephas, then by the twelve. After that, he was seen by over 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain to the present. But some have fallen asleep. After that, he was seen by James and then by all the apostles. Then last of all, he was seen by me also as by one born out of due time. Um, in the prayer time today, um, we'd like to open it up to anyone that has prayer requests. If you have any uh, answered prayers or any praise, you could share it now. I got a list. Yeah. You got what? I have a list. A, a lift? List. A list. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, Do you want to come up here? Yeah, sure. Sure. Um, so well, that's loud. Let's start with the uh, answered prayers, I guess. So I've had complications at work and I've had uh, kind of a rough time, and sometimes, like, for someone like me, it's hard to know when God's talking to you, and for me, I get things coming, people, and coincidences that are not really coincidences coming in and out of my life, so uh, things have lightened up at work. God has delivered the right people in the right places, 
and they're really good people. And you can just, you can tell. And I think it answered my prayers in a lot of ways because from my perspective, um, being a Christian, I have not been a Christian for very long and I, is a work in progress, which uh, I'm sure many can, you know, uh, sympathize with. But I have had amazing examples uh, at work of uh, people just coming in to my life and sharing the gospel. And it's strangers. It's uh, it's the cleaning lady who comes in and I see her walk down and she is the best example of a Christian that I can ever think of. And she's out there giving blankets and food to the homeless. And then I see her come back in and you know, she's praying for me. She's praying for our office because the hardships we're going through. She's going upstairs, praying for the people over there. She's blessing all the rooms. It's amazing. And for God to provide those examples in my life, for me, I feel like that has blessed me and given me some courage and definitely reaffirmed my faith. Um, so I wanted to share that because a lot of times we think of, well, at least people like myself, maybe I'm not good enough. Maybe I'm falling short. I know all the ways I'm falling short. And I see this person who uh, has shared her life story with me, who's just doing amazing things. And, you know, she's not rich. She's not a pastor. Um, she just became Christian herself a couple of years ago. And it is an amazing example. And then all these other people that he's brought in my life, it's truly blessed me. And, and then, of course, um, got my family. Everything's going well so far, which is great. And... Um, I'm praying for my nephew who has been ill and uh, some friends who have cancer and a couple of friends that have cancer and things seem to be going well. So I feel in that, in that regard, um, I'm blessed, but I'm always going to ask for help. So just wanted to share that. Thank you. Anyone else? I'll share one thing, but I don't want to come up. Okay, sure. Yeah. All right. They're part of our life, these animals. <laughs> you guys pray for my wrist that it gets back to my wrist. Priscilla's wrist. She injured her wrist this week. Pray for her wrist. While you're at it, pray for mine as well. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's not getting totally 100% back to normal. So, anyone else? Linda? Uh, and I'll stay here. Um, so two things. Praise God. Amen. Yes, amen. Jim. Mm -hmm. And you said Justin. What was the name? Justin. Justin. And, uh, Rich. And Justin. And Rich. And John and Annie. And keep praying for them. Oh, yeah. And Sylvia. That's her name. Oh, well, that's his one. Oh, Sylvia's your mom. Dorothy. Okay. I'm sorry. I don't remember. Yeah, I remember the moms. Yes. Okay, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, we are so grateful to be here today. We are thankful that, that you shared, shed your love on us and that you died for us. Um, and we are just so grateful to hear all of these blessings that people have shared today about how you have gone be grown closer to or Linda has grown closer to you and um and the experience that James is having at work and the um, people that are witnessing there and are sharing and showing your love. We pray for the ones in our that can't be with us that are uh, going through illness, we pray for Jim and also remember Penny and for John and Annie. Uh, we pray that you will put your healing hand on them. Also for Priscilla's wrist and, and that you will bring it back to normal. And I'd also request that for my own. We pray for um, the two moms, uh, Sylvia and Dorothy. Um, and we just pray for that they that you will put your protection around them. And Lord, we just look forward to this um, event next weekend. We just pray that we can be uh, a shining light into the community. We pray that you could draw people in 
and that we could share your love to them. Um, and also the Sabbath, that we could share our love of the Sabbath with them. And um, we pray for good weather, Lord, so that that people might come. We pray for the Foothills people, and we just thank you so much for them and for their commitment and their sacrifices to come and to be with us. We pray for that you will give them good travel both ways, uh, and also for Josh Coleman is, that is coming from Pennsylvania, I believe. And um, uh, we just look forward to this time and and uh, pray that it will be a good event. And um, we pr we thank you, Lord, for the sacrifice you, that, that you have made to for us. And uh, we pray that you will be with us in this service and also in our fellowship time today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In uh, many churches, including Seventh-day Baptist churches, it's traditional that on the day when we do the Lord's Supper, that we also read the Church Covenant together. Now, is this, I mean, is it commanded in the Bible that we should do this the same day? No. But if we have covenanted together as a Christian church to believe and to do certain things, and probably good we should be remind you know, we should be reminding ourselves every so often what those things are. And this is a good time to do it. So right now turn to the back of your bulletin and you will find at the top our church covenant. If you have that, let's let's read it together. Since God, by his grace, has brought us into union with himself through Jesus Christ and into fellowship with each other as a consequence of our common faith in him, we as members of the Phoenix Seventh-day Baptist Fellowship solemnly enter into covenant with each other, purposing to live by faith in Jesus Christ and in Christian love toward one another, looking out for the interests of each other. Take the Bible, God's Word, to be our final authority in matters of faith and life. Participate in the life of the church and in the support of a, our common mission of bringing others to faith in Christ. If that wasn't exactly a prayer, but if you agree with it, say amen. Amen. According to the calendar, uh, tomorrow, is the day that's called Easter. Not, not really a national holiday, but it's but it's kind of a special day that that is celebrated by most most Christian churches. And of course I'm thinking of the Christian Easter, not the Easter Bunny Easter, if you catch that difference. I'm sure we know that difference. Now Easter is it's actually supposed to be right around the time of Passover, though you know this year it isn't. I mean, Passover isn't isn't for another three weeks or so, isn't that right? Um, well, it's still fairly close, and uh, and so you know, since we're Christians, I hope it's okay that we're thinking about these things now, along with the rest of the Christian Church. Actually, it's always a good time to think about Jesus' death and resurrection. Uh, two weeks ago, we heard an excellent message about Jesus' resurrection. We heard historical evidence that Jesus really did rise from the dead. It really did happen. We even got some handouts 
that had some very good information, a lot more than what was shared then. Uh, we still have a few of these if, if, if you want one. Thank you, Leland, for sharing that with us then. You know, Jesus' resurrection from the dead is, is what some people call the centerpiece of the Christian faith. Uh, as we heard earlier in 1 Corinthians 15, if the dead do not rise, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. In other words, if Jesus didn't rise from the dead, the Christian faith is false, and we would be foolish to accept it. But the fact is, he did rise from the dead, and our faith in him is not foolish, to say the least. So this weekend is the, the usual time, um, at least this year. <laughs> This happens in either sometime in March or sometime in April every year, the usual time for the Christian church to remember this great thing that happened almost 2,000 years ago. Now, I won't go into this now, but I have heard some Christians argue that Jesus' resurrection wasn't on Sunday at all but that it was actually Saturday night. Now, the Bible isn't real specific about exactly when Jesus left the tomb. Though it does say that the empty tomb was found on Sunday morning. Today, we're going to do the Lord's Supper, also called Communion. Now, back when I was preaching regularly, I... I I always kind of liked it when the when the calendar worked out so that the Lord's Supper comes at at about the same time as the resurrection. You know, that that actually doesn't happen very often. But there's good reason for doing these two things together. And I believe we, we will see it if we hear what Jesus said in Luke 18. Uh, please find Luke 18 in your Bible, and I'm going to start reading at verse 31. That's Luke 18, 31 to 33. Then he took the twelve aside and said to them, Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem, and all things that are written by the prophets concerning the Son of Man will be accomplished. For he will be delivered to the Gentiles, and will be mocked and insulted and spit upon. They will scourge him and kill him, and the third day he will rise again. In the original language, uh, verses 32 and 33 are one sentence. Now, that doesn't really prove anything, but uh, it maybe kind of illustrates something that I think we need to see today. You know, we have a tendency to sometimes separate things that really shouldn't be separated. I don't know if you've ever noticed that. Uh, for instance, Christians often say, that there is a physical part of our lives and there is a spiritual part. And sometimes we talk about them as though they're, they're something very different from each other. So we'll say that we have physical problems and then that there, there are spiritual problems. For the most part, the Bible doesn't do that. It says we are one person made up of spiritual and physical. Or another example, uh, I've heard Christians talk about, you know, this present life as Christians and the next life. In other words, our present life here on earth and our future life in heaven 
as though they are something completely different from each other. What the Bible says is that we have eternal life. We have it now, and we have it in the future, forever. Well, it's, it's the same sort of thing with Jesus' death and resurrection. Uh, some churches like to, you know, kind of separate them uh, like it's you know, two different things that happened a few days apart. So a common calendar in the church year will will uh, go something like, you know, one week we sing and we preach about Jesus' suffering and death, concentrating on that. And then the next week, we sing and preach about his resurrection. There's certainly nothing wrong with that. Not at all. But listen to what Jesus said here. He said, I'm kind of summarizing the verses we read. The Son of Man will be handed over and killed and rise again. And sounds like he kind of said it in one breath. And as I said, one sentence in Greek. It's one thought. It's one event. His death and resurrection. Now, of course, Jesus dying had to happen so that the penalty for sin could be paid. The wages of sin is death. So Jesus endured that for us in our place so that we wouldn't have to pay the price ourselves. As the Son of God and the Son of Man, he, he could pay. He's the only person who's ever been able to do this. He could pay a price that would satisfy God's wrath against sin. And that's what he did. Jesus rising from the dead had to happen because, well, by dying, he won the war against sin and death and the devil. If Jesus has defeated death, why should he himself stay dead? I can't imagine why. This was a victory that couldn't be hidden. Uh, so Jesus appeared to his followers to show them that he was alive again. And Christians have been celebrating his resurrection ever since. He really was dead. But he couldn't stay dead. He had to rise again. So that's what he did. And again, it's really one event in God's plan. So we can celebrate it that way today. Fulfilling exactly what Jesus said would happen. Look again at what we read there in uh, Luke 18. It all happened, as he said. They did go up to Jerusalem. Everything that was written through the prophets about the Son of Man was fulfilled. He was delivered to the Gentiles. They did mock him, insult him, and spit on him. They did scourge him and kill him. On the third day, he did rise again. You know, these are not so much separate events, but one thing that Jesus did for you and me so that we could be saved. If you believe that he did that, and you have, and if you have committed your life to him, I, will, I invite you to celebrate and to give thanks by eating and drinking together Let's affirm everything that Jesus did for us. As we prepare for the Lord's Supper, let me ask a couple of questions. Uh, some people have asked, how do we really know Jesus died? Maybe he faked it. <laughs> well, that question is answered at the beginning of 1 Corinthians 15, which we heard earlier, where Paul wrote, 
I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that, that Christ died for your sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried. Notice it says he was buried. You know, someone like Edgar Allan Poe might write stories about people being buried alive, but in real life, people are buried because they have died. And, and that's the case with Jesus. He was buried because he really did die. People have also asked, how do we really know Jesus came alive again and came out of the tomb? Well, 1 Corinthians 15 continues. And that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and that he appeared. Jesus appeared to people several times after that third day. He appeared to individual people, to small groups, and one time, it says, to a group of more than 500. This happened over a period of 40 days before he went back to heaven. He rose from the dead and showed people that he was alive again because he really did win the victory over death. Let's pray. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father, that death is swallowed up in victory, the victory that he won by shedding his blood and giving his life. Lord God, we understand and believe that what Jesus did was real. It happened at a real time and in a real place. Thank you that our faith is based on fact, and not fantasy. And we're especially grateful for the fact of Jesus suffering and dying for us. Bless this bread that we eat to remind us of what he did. Bless this cup as we drink to show us his victory. Amen. Jesus said, this is my body broken for you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Today we tried to see Jesus' death and resurrection as one event. You know what? Even then, we stop short of the whole picture. He also promised that he will come again. So take your bulletin again, and let's close with the words that you find in the middle of the back that I've called the benediction. <clears throat> let's read this. It's kind of like a declaration, you might say. Let's read this together three times. You ready? Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ is coming again. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ is coming again. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ is coming again. Amen. Lord bless you.